Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be um, a video that a lot of you um, were inquiring about um, where you wanted to see a video where I would talk about the evolution of my spiritual journey. So um, those of you who have been watching me from the very beginning, um, I started this YouTube channel, I believe in 2014. <sighs> or it could have been 2015, early 2015. I think it's been like early 2015. It's only been like three years. Um, but I have had a very, and if you were watching my channel, when it was Luna Hour back in 2014, that was when I deleted that one and then I started the cackling moon. So it has been about four years. Um, my spiritual journey has definitely changed significantly since I very my very first um, video on YouTube or my very first step into the spiritual <clears throat> path um, and I guess let's just talk about it let's just let me just share that with you so um, let's see my spiritual journey from how do I even begin? I don't want to, I don't want this to be like this long video. So let's just do a quick summary. <clears throat> I was raised Catholic. And then when I was 14, I was baptized, baptized into a um, born again Christian church. Um, not of my own personal will. It was at the Basically, it was at the wishes of my parents. Um, and then in, when I was 20, oh my gosh, I don't even know, 2010, 2010, <coughs> I um, converted back to the Catholic Church. So from when I was what, when I was like 14, 15, that was 2000, 2000 time, um, to about 2010, so about 10 years, um, I was born again Christian. Um, I quote that because I never fully felt connected to that belief system or that church. Um, I <clears throat> wanted to, for the for the a very good chunk of myself wanted to be able to have the same experiences um, that I saw family members and, and different people in the church have. But for some reason, I never felt connected. Um, I wasn't really connected with the Catholic Church either. Um, I was young and we went, I did my, you know, my, my catechism classes and I made my first Holy Communion. But that was because that was what you did. Um, and when you grow up in a Hispanic family, um, the majority, not all of us, but the majority do follow the Catholic upbringing. So I wasn't ever really connected to God in those ways. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm getting sick again, you guys. It's awful. Um, I was never connected to God in those ways. I always questioned everything. I was always curious about everything. Um, I've always had interest in astrology. I, from a, as a little girl, I was interested in astrology um, and palmistry too, as I found some old books that I used to have. <laughs> um, and but I never dabbled in that stuff either. So I was always just kind of figuring my own way. By the time I was 14, 15, I had my first boyfriend and I was experiencing life with having a boyfriend and all of that. So my spirituality really wasn't at the forefront at all. Um, and then when I met my husband, when we were dating, I was very much trying to fulfill myself as a Christian and my husband was a practicing Catholic. So I actually, that first year, going into the two year mark, um, I tried to get him to convert to the born again Christian faith because I knew that um, one, my family wasn't going to like me dating somebody who was not of our faith um, and that if we wanted to get married, that it was gonna be an, an issue. <clears throat> 
So I tried with my hardest to get him to convert. When in reality, I myself didn't really think that that was what I wanted. I was always I was always doing what I felt I was supposed to do or that was wanted of me by my family. So then fast forward to when I was, cause I, and I met him when I was 21. Um, so fast forward to when I'm about, and when I, when I met him, it was 2007, uh, 2007, eight, nine, 10. So three years later, three to four years later, it was like 2010 to 2011. It was like 2010, I think I started taking the classes. And I, and I made the decision I'm going to convert back to the Catholic Church because my whole spiritual awakening was starting to happen. Um, I wasn't really understanding at the time what I was, what was happening. <coughs> I started seeing 11-11. I started seeing like just little things and I was really questioning stuff and I was very attracted to the ritual of the, the Catholic faith. I loved that it was very witchy, like it felt witchy. And at that time, <clears throat> in 2012, was when I was having my full-blown awakening. So by that time, I was already going to, to the Catholic Church, which was a big fiasco with my family. But I'm, I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole separate video. Um, but I was, I was attending the Catholic Mass every Sunday with my husband, um, with my boyfriend. He was my boyfriend at the time. Um, but at the same time, I was also experiencing these crazy synchronicities, um, and my tastes started to change in spirituality. So in 2012, I was noticing 1111 everywhere. Um, I never thought to look it up, but I was noticing it. I remember I was, I would think to myself, this is so weird. Like, why do I keep seeing this number? And then that summer I started going to therapy um, for personal reasons and I was in therapy for six months. Um, and in therapy, I was, my therapist, actually her name went by Anjali, which when you write it out, it looks like angel. Um, it was, she was tip def definitely like a guardian angel. It was crazy, but she was very spiritual. And now that I look back at it, there would be things that I would notice about my therapist that I didn't notice at the time because I wasn't into the, the path yet. But now that I look back on it, it was like, oh, she always wore this, this specific necklace and it was a crystal. Um, <clears throat> and the, some of the stuff she would say had a very new age uh, feel to it, but I didn't recognize it at the time. So I started seeing the therapist and really she was just trying to get me to discover myself um, because a lot of the things that we would discuss that I was dealing with were, you know, a lot of past issues when I was a child or when I was a, a young adult um, and resentment and all of these like emotions. Like I cried every single session and I, I remember telling her like my, my faith in God, I felt like I felt so bad because I wasn't, I wasn't strongly connected to God like, like, like my sister or my mom or whatever. <clears throat> and I remember she had told me I have to find my own way. And she encouraged me to totally go onto a path that was me. And she asked me, start thinking about what are your interests? What really interests you? And so I really started to think about it and I was like, pulling out all these random things, you know, like astrology. I was like, I've always been into this. And then all of a sudden I'm looking at a video on YouTube. I was watching makeup videos at the time and um, a tarot video popped up by Kellyanne Maddox. And I remember I watched that video because I was curious, like, what is this? And that opened up the floodgates of everything else. <laughs> So I really took her advice seriously and I started the whole point of my spiritual journey was based on her telling me to find what truly interests me, not what interests my parents, not what interests, you know, my, my boyfriend, me, it has to come from me. So I noticed I was like dabbling into, you know, all these little things and <clears throat> I think I was having one of those moments where um, a lot of teenagers have it um, when you're discovering yourself. I had mine really late. I was already in my 20s, my mid-20s. Um, 
because I was so sheltered and I was so promiscuous and focused on boys in high school that the dabbling of witchcraft or the dabbling of like new age stuff didn't hit me till way later. So I did dabble with witchcraft. Um, that was like one of the first avenues I wanted to read about and learn about because this was all new uncharted territory and it was like my therapist told me it was okay to actually discover myself in my own way and it was that was profound for me because all of my life I was told this is what you're supposed to believe in and this is how you're supposed to feel and this is what you're supposed to do so let me get my did I bring it where are you <laughs> I have um oh I think I left it in the other room let me let me get my this is really important to my story so hang on one second you guys Okay, so as um, a lot of you know, when you're starting on a path and when you're like learning about like witchcraft and like all that kind of stuff, there's a thing called a book of shadows, right? And for every witch, it's different. Some people, it's a place where you put your spells in. Other place, people, it's like a journal. Mine was like a journal scrapbook. So I really, I started to keep... <coughs> A book of shadows um, and I started to keep little things so I remember this was more not like a book of shadows but it was more of an outlet for me to get out of like to get out a lot of things that I was feeling so I treated it as <laughs> there's like feathers everywhere <laughs> so I treated it as that and I it went to me it was a work of art and every once in a while I was putting you know you know a spell here or there but it was basically a work of art for me. And it was something that I would do to release um, my feelings. So when I was painting the page, you know, it was therapeutic for me. So anyways, I dabbled into that maybe for a few months. Um, I was trying to figure out. I never got into Wicca. I was never into that. Um, I was really, really, to be honest with you guys, I wasn't, I didn't want anything that had a lot of rules. I didn't want anything that had a lot of like guidance, like you have to do this, you have to do it, do it this way, because that's what I was coming out of. <clears throat> um, so the witchy part of me was there. Um, I did a lot of like candle stuff. I did a lot of herb stuff. There's like feathers flying everywhere. A lot of herbs. Um, I was like dressing candles, that kind of stuff. You'd probably see it in older videos. Um, but after a while, it didn't fit. And during that time, I was also learning the tarot. I was reading. I started selling my readings and this and that. Um, so the whole witchy aspect kind of was what was started. It started that way, <clears throat> but it quickly fizzled out for me. Um, it just didn't feel like my calling. Um, and so I don't refer to myself as that anymore. I did for a slight few months. But it just didn't feel right. Um, and I, would, it's, I was still attending like Catholic Mass and stuff. Now, I would say within the last two years, I have been very much heavily in my own personal viewpoints of my spirituality. <clears throat> I don't have walls <laughs> to my spirituality. I don't have rules. I don't have boundary points and anything that makes me feel limited and caged in my spirituality I want it to remain an open space for myself and my mind and my heart um, the moment I start to feel like I'm caged into it I it's like a turn off um, and I have to get myself out of that because that's exactly how I was feeling with the church so um, am I attending church right now no um, I haven't attended a mass in months um, I don't feel the need to or the call to. Um, a lot of my connection to God has been through my meditation. Um, I have rediscovered him in that way. Him, 
it the like god like <clears throat> if you want to give god a gender i mean i just say him because that's just always how i portray god but to me god is like an energy and a love feeling and an emotion it's not a person it's not you know it's nothing like that my whole perspective on that has changed a lot um i could dive in deeper on that but I'm also very, I like to keep some stuff private for myself. So a lot of this, a lot of this path um, is very private to me um, because it wasn't just me learning about a whole new faith. It was me finding out about myself and learning about who I am. And that was very private and very intense and very intimate for me because um, if you grew up being told what to do or what to believe in or how to feel, um, you will understand. And it is not a good feeling. And it is such a liberating feeling to finally be told to discover your life for yourself. And <clears throat> that's exactly what I've been doing. So my spiritual journey has been all about discovering who I am, what interests me, what makes me happy, what what inspires me. And that is powerful in itself. So <laughs> that's why I um I don't want to get too deep into my my little path cuz that's my own business, you know? So where am I now? Like where am I at now with my practice? Do I consider myself um any specific faith? No. I just say spiritual do i believe in god yes um is it the same god that <clears throat> that is like known as from the christian church or the catholic church um i feel like it's the same vibration but it's a whole different type of feel i don't know i don't know how to explain it like <laughs> um i don't agree with a lot of the things that they teach um, so it's just my own discovery and it's really my own personal connection, my relationship. Um, I find just so much more in my connection with God through my meditation than I have ever done or I have ever felt while sitting in church. Um, I think because I relate sitting in church so much to being forced there because for a good piece of my life while I was you know still under 18 I was forced to go um, I had no choice so and I wasn't one of those rebellious kids or teenagers where I would do whatever I wanted I I obeyed my parents rules and wishes even beyond once I turned 18 I was still like that I've always been a very respectful child or daughter um, I should say um, but I don't know. Um, that's basically where my spiritual path is. It's, it has changed a lot. Um, tarot is not part of my spirituality. I don't consider it that. I consider that as a tool, a practice that I do, but it's not like, it doesn't, it, it's not connected. I don't, I don't feel like it's connected <coughs> to my belief system. Um, it's, it was something that I discovered while I was on that path, um, but it's not a way that I express my faith, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I think I answered your guys' question. <laughs> um, I know that some of you were a little curious because like I said, you, a lot of you have <clears throat> followed me all these years and you've heard me you know, make comments about how I don't do certain things anymore or whatever. And like I said, a lot of you probably dabbled with your own things um, at much younger ages than I did. Um, but when I was 14, I wasn't thinking about um, spirituality or new age or witchcraft or whatever. When I was 14, I was going out with guys. Um, I was very promiscuous, which was another you know, issue that I was dealing with at that time too. So I was on a whole different path. I wasn't thinking god <laughs> or spirituality or witchcraft or whatever any of that stuff i was i was all about boys in in high school so <clears throat> um all of that dabbling with that stuff 
really happened much later in my life. Um, so some of you may be feeling like that's a little weird. Like I went through that phase early, <laughs> but it had a lot to do with the fact that I was very sheltered when I was growing up. Um, I was sheltered or I was very much like not allowed to do certain things or I wasn't allowed to read certain books or whatever or watch certain TV shows. I grew up very conservative um, and anything that I did try to do was always hush hush or like behind their backs um, or I would make up little, little lies to say where I was one place when I was really somewhere else. Um, you know, typical stuff that I'm sure a lot of teenagers do these days, but um, I wasn't into all of that witchcraft stuff like a lot of these teenagers. That's like one of the phases that they go through. They're, they're discovering themselves. Um, my phase was much later. So that is my little story or update about, you know, <clears throat> my spiritual path. I am still reading the cards. I am still very much discovering more about myself. Um, I love my journey and I don't, I wouldn't want it any other way. I wouldn't want it any different. I actually think that everything happens for a reason. Um, so I am very much happy and content with where I'm going with my path. And if you guys have any other questions, please leave some comments below. I would love to hear from you and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye loves.